Join our friend and semi-hero, Roger Wilco, as he rockets back toward his home planet, Xenon, which he hasn't seen since Space Quest II. Having successfully rescued those two ingrates from Andromeda, he decides a pit stop on Magmetheus is in order. During the descent to this cosmic canteen, he is unaware of the interest that has been generated regarding his fate. We have confirmation of his position, Master. Off to Magnetheus with you then. It is time for Wilco to meet the fate which I have crafted for him. As our story begins, we find the aluminum mallard parked outside a seedy spaceport barn. <laughs> We join Roger as he relates one of his greatly exaggerated tales of adventure. The aliens are only too happy to listen, as long as Roger is by. See, there is this deadly root monster, a ferocious swamp creature, and a Le'Veon terror beast to contend with. Then I had to outsmart another of Bohol gorillas and steal the shuttle so I could penetrate the asteroid fortress and pull the plug on that corpulent creep. Are you Roger Wilco? Uh, yeah. Please come with me. Hello, Roger Wilco. Surprised to see an old friend? You have no idea how special this moment is for me. This is no chance encounter, I can assure you. I have this one loose end to tie up before I begin my reign as the supreme being of all that exists. I do not like to lose. You are a blemish on what would otherwise be a perfect record of domination, terror, and invincibility. Besides, I'm still a bit miffed about that asteroid deal in Space Quest 2. Anyway, to relieve the pain of my humiliation and to prevent you from being a pain in my... future, you must die. It's been nice seeing you one last time. Then, do the dirty deed. You go left and split them up. Mr. Wilco, follow me and do exactly as I say. Let's move! Hey, I want to know what the... F Listen, I can't explain it all to you now. It's got a beat on our coordinates. We've got to move fast. 
We gotta do this fast. Shield your eyes. Jump into the time rip. Do it now. You've got to. If I take the time to explain more, both parking lot pizza. You'll understand soon. Now where am I, you wonder aloud to non-existent auditory organs? This place sure looks homey. Hey, wait, this looks just like Xenon. It is Xenon. It's, it's, it's really a pile. Along with the changes induced by an armed conflict, the city looks different, more modern, with a heavy dash of post-disaster seasoning. Casually glancing at the status line, you happen to notice that you're in Space Quest 12. What's happened? Who was that guy with the overdeveloped hair dryer? Why did you let yourself be talked into jumping into some strange shimmering hole? Why are you talking to yourself? These incredibly intriguing questions will quickly be forgotten with barely an electron stirred in that well-armored orb atop your shoulders. Take the small, frayed, useless-looking length of rope. Don't you... Those sure are some finely honed reactions you've got there. Perhaps you're still suffering from time lag. That was without a doubt one of the finest examples of bunny snatching I've ever seen. The stress placed on the rope during the bunny snatching was too much. You cast the useless fibers aside. Timing is a critical factor here. That was without a doubt one of the finest examples of bunny snatching I've ever seen. The stress placed on the rope during the bunny snatching was too much. You cast the useless fibers aside.
After taking a quick look around to reassure yourself that the place is as dead as it looks, you snitch the Pocket Pal laptop. You extract the portable power pellet from the back of the bunny's polyplastoid torso. You plug the mobile power cylinder into the laptop. Okay, you now have the unstable ordinance. Remember, it was your idea. Good luck. I would think that something identifiable as unstable ordinance would be low on your list of fun and healthy things to carry. We hope you'll get yourself together and rejoin us. Isn't this a blast? Very wise choice. Carefully placing the unstable ordinance back inside the tank, you decide some things are better left alone. It's an empty jar with a lid, neither You take the jar into custody. Ah, a button. Perhaps I'll give it a press. Data entry 22795. This message is to whomever may be so fortunate as to find it. I am Professor Lloyd, lead designer of the Xenon Supercomputer Project, the ultimate in artificial intelligence. The computer was designed to enhance our lives, but instead ended up being the ruin of us all. We made the mistake of tying it into the most important facets of our existence here on Xenon, including our weather control and defense systems. It seemed like a sound idea at the time, and all proceeded well for about three years. It was around then that a deep space salvage operation recovered what appeared to be some sort of antiquated data storage unit contained in a flimsy cardboard box on which the words Leisure Suit Larry were imprinted.
on its back was the picture of a not particularly wholesome gentleman, but that's another story. My counterparts exhibited shameful behavior as they tore open the box to get at its contents. I could not understand the commotion it generated. The data was uploaded into the supercomputer for analysis. As a result, a crippling virus spread through the machine like a bad social disease. All control of the computer was lost. All screens went blank. Then these words were displayed by the monitors and uttered by the vocal outputs. Wilco must pay. From that day forth, the possessed computer waged war on the inhabitants of Xenon, using our own weapons against us. Some managed to escape to other planets. Those of us who remained stayed to fight the machines and robots under its control. It was a bloody war. Those of us that were not killed were taken captive and modified. These cyborgs infiltrated the loyal ranks of resistance, rooting out almost all of our hiding places and exposing us to the mechanical menace. Some of these poor souls still wander the streets. As of this recording, we are down to only a handful of rebels. My health is deteriorating rapidly. To make matters worse, I've just learned that the computer has unraveled the mysteries of time travel. I've sent my two best men to attempt to steal this new technology. If you are not a machine, then perhaps they were successful. Please realize, you are Xenon's last hope. The door has shut, and there's no way back. What are you going to do now? serve no purpose. Okay. You scoop up the slimy secretion. Better get away now before it scoops you up. seems to be a relatively spacious landing gear compartment. Wonder how cramped it gets in there when the gear is towed.
The powerful quad quark drives Rev to life. Time and space bend under the fibrillations of the time rip transfluxers. Your adrenaline and stomach reel with the hyperbolic hyperbole. And finally, finally, nothing much happens. That must not have been a valid code. Try again. The powerful quad quark drives Rev to life. Time and space bend under the fibrillations of the time rip transfluxers. Your adrenaline and stomach reel with the hyperbolic hyperbole. And finally, finally!
Whoa! What was that? Those talon things hurt. You didn't much care for the landing either. The huge nest is constructed of sticks and assorted being parts gathered from this bleak planet. It is then cemented in place by a generous helping of pterodactyl saliva. <laughs> the huge nest is constructed of sticks and assorted being parts gathered from this bleak planet. It is then cemented in place by a generous helping of pterodactyl saliva. <laughs> my, my. Rather than the sequel policeman penetrating the inner sanctum of the nest, the reverse obviously occurred. You frisk the skewered sequel policeman and turn up a paper-wrapped wad of used chewing gum. You've got a lot of nerve coming back here, Roger Wilco. After leaving me the way you did, you male scum. This is the last woman you will ever dump on. Right, girls? Right. right. Said you couldn't be tied down. I said that? You said you had to be free to roam the galaxy. Was that me? You'll be sorrier than you look. We'll see to that. Yeah. Into the sub, flyboy. She looks like she might be familiar to you someday. However, the gun in her hand looks like it could limit the chance of any lasting relationship in the future. Or the past. You hope these women soon realize that they must have the wrong guy. This is Zandra. We are approaching checkpoint six. Prepare to open the tunnel door. Activate the door.
sit down. Comfy, Mr. Wilco? Hey, what are you doing? Let me go, b witch. Shut up. Your whimpering sickens me. I'll teach you not to run out on me. Thorin is quite knowledgeable in the ways of torture. I'll let the two of you get acquainted. Thorin, do your stuff. With pleasure, Zandra. Let me introduce you to a friend of mine. This is Epiwhip 357, the most powerful hand hair remover in the universe, and it's capable of shaving your legs clean off. I've always wanted to see a man shave with one of these, but I guess you'll do. Now you'll know the meaning of the word pain. Ah! It's a sea slug! Run, girls! Desperately, you try to push the button, but the restraints are just too tight. Desperately, you try to push the button, but the restraints are just too tight. Wasn't he great, girls? Well, Raj, I guess we can call it even. Thank you for ridding our fortress of that slimy, awful sea slug. I, uh... I know I can't blame you for backing out at the last minute. I guess I was a little overbearing. Sorry. Can we still be good friends? Well, now, wait a minute. Let's talk about this. No, Roger. You were right. You don't need to spare my feelings. It just wasn't meant to be. It's better this way. Well, girls, I feel like celebrating. Let's go shopping! Meanwhile, back in Space Quest 12... This is the rebel scum we captured in the Space Quest IV time sector. He had just aided Wilco in escaping. The readout on his time gun indicates that Wilco was successfully transported into this time sector as you feared. That is no longer a concern. Wilco will surrender to us once he has learned we have captured his son. Then he will be destroyed once and for all. <laughs>
Hey, keep your hands off yourself. This is a family game. Hey, keep your hands off yourself. This is a family game. You pick up the ATM card. You obviously don't resemble a blonde woman. What a surprise. Dire need of my services. I'm sorry, I lost my boots and the legs of my pants in a deadly fight with a giant sea slug, which I won in the nick of time with my clever thinking and my, uh, cleverness. I see. Well, all right. Let me get your measurements. Just the thing for the likes of you. I assume you will be wanting something in the generic space hero line? These will do for you. Try them on in the dressing room here if you wish. You change your clothes, not forgetting the items in your pocket. You never know when you'll need them. You step out looking good as new. That will be a 20 bakasoids, please. Thank you so much for shopping with us, sir. Do come back soon. Like, uh, we're out of it. We're out of everything, including employees. Would you like to apply for a job? You would, huh? Well, this is the greatest opportunity you've ever had, kid. Benefits up the wazoo, and 
If you stick with me a uh, half an hour or so, I'll make you my assistant manager. Now, how would you like that? Gee, thanks. Warning, the following sequence contains explicit arcade action and is not recommended for die-hard adventure players, the arcade squeamish, or those with poor to non-existent motor skills. So easy, a human could probably do it. Burger comes out of the oven. Drop on your lettuce, your pickle, squeeze on your mayo, squirt on your mustard. On goes your ketchup. Top it off with your sesame seed bun. You make them my way, and if you mess up enough times, you're out of here. Got it? If you need to know how to run the assembly line, read the sign. Just click it with the mouse or press R. Don't mess with it. Don't mess with it. Thank you. 
Keep your hands to yourself. Keep your hands to yourself. could do a better job than you could. Don't mess with it. You retrieve the cigar butt.
Hiya, hun. I'm Maybot, fashion consultant to the cosmos. What can we, oh, do with you today? Well, uh, this is kind of hard to explain. Oh, let me guess. You want something for someone very special. Someone who died to get the latest in high galactic fashion. Are we right, or are we right? Um, we're right. Okay, what size does he think? Ooh, 38. Oh, I don't think we're right about that. Um, I, uh, I'm not sure, but she's built about like me. Is she? A likely story. Good thing for you, I can keep a secret, sweetie. This will suit that special someone's needs. It's all the rage. I suppose you want to try it on now. Here, use this dressing room. If your special someone needs a wig, this one should look pretty good on you. Very lovely, honey. It's made for you. Would you like us to wrap it up, or would that special someone prefer you to wear it home? I think I'll wear it home. Just what we thought. That will be 60 buckazoids, sicko. Appreciate it, hon. Thanks for shopping at Saks. You can't do that.
This guy looks like the living torso. He probably works for an intergalactic freak show. As much as we enjoy seeing you get in trouble, we must warn you that this type of behavior is universally considered either rude or amorous, which could get you either killed or married. change your clothes, you think to yourself that even in drag, you still have incredible animal magnetism. Or is that just a lack of deodorant? for a good database? We've got one coming in next week. The two guys from Andromeda's latest sci-fi comedy, Space Quest IV, will give you hours of frustration, unless you have this hint book. Want to know how to get the dog into the hanging basket? Want to find out how to attach the melon? Buy this hint book and it all becomes obvious. You'll hit your head and say, boy, how stupid could I have been? A moron could have figured this out. I must be a real dimwit. A pathetic nimno, a wretched idiotic excuse for a human being not to have figured out these simple puzzles in the first place. Try it and see. The two guys. from our box of slop, or bargain bin. <laughs> Thank you. An SQ-4 hint book. Nothing happened. You can't. 
Can't use that here. Nothing happens. You can't use that here. Oh, great. Only half the answer showed. It must be a defective hint module. serve no purpose.
that, you're dead. Zap, you're dead.
These symbols look vaguely familiar. Now, where have you seen them? The powerful quad quark drives Rev to life. Time and space bend under the fibrillations of the time rip transfluxers. Your adrenaline and stomach reel with the hyperbolic hyperbole. And finally, finally! The old bar is still here. The smell of Coronian ale stinks up the place. The aroma leads you to remember vividly your previous visit here. You break out in a cold sweat. Some rather drab looking individuals are hogging the bar. This guy's the ugliest of all. Keep your hands to yourself. You see a book of matches on the bar countertop. Your attempt to get the matches failed. Well, looky here. If it ain't Mr. Look at me, I'm in VGA. What's the matter? Monochrome not good enough for you? What's this? 256 colors all for one little bitmap wimp? What a waste of VGA. <laughs> hey, Phyllis. I bet I can toss them all the way out from the bottom of the stairs. Bet you nail. That was close! Hey, how come their bikes can go through the force field? You 
hear a high-pitched whine from the east. Nice reflexes. Life is pounded loose from your body by the impact of the sand bike. here, the smell of Caronian ale stinks up the place. The aroma leads you to remember vividly your previous visit here. You break out in a cold sweat. You see a book of matches on the bar countertop. Your attempt to get the matches failed. Well, looky here! If it ain't mister, look at me, I'm in VGA. What's the matter? Monochrome not good enough for you? What's this? 256 colors all for one little bitmap wimp? What a waste of VGA. <laughs> hey, Phyllis, I bet I can toss them all the way out from the bottom of the stairs. Bitch and ale. Close. Hey, how come their bikes can go through the force field? hear a high-pitched whine from the east. Oh, that was close. You pick up the book of matches. You hear a high-pitched whine from the east. Nice reflexes. Life is pounded loose from your body by the impact of the sand bike. Now this is a pain that'll linger. All the Ben Gay in Florida won't relieve this stiffness.
pick up the book of matches. You hear a high-pitched whine from the east. Boy, that was close. The powerful quad quark drives Rev to life. Time and space bend under the fibrillations of the time rip transfluxers. Your adrenaline and stomach reel with the hyperbolic hyperbole. And finally, finally! Well, there's not much left of the lock now. You slide the conveniently pre-moistened stogie between your lips, apply a lit match, and proceed to nearly hack up a lung. You cast the old stogie to the ground.
you hear an electronic hum approaching from ahead of you. You hear an electronic hum approaching from behind you. The powerful quad quark drives Rev to life. Time and space bend under the thip. And finally, finally, nothing much happens. That must not have been a valid code. Try again. The powerful quad quark drives Rev to life. Time and space bend under the fibrillations of the time rip transfluxers. Your adrenaline and stomach reel with the hyperbolic hyperbole. And finally, finally!
Keep your hands to yourself. That's not a very clean habit. Your sense of appropriate public behavior leaves a lot to be desired. All Components Swiss Army Micro Entertainment Center. Styled to look like a real set of miniature components, this is a complete home entertainment center in one 4x6 inch box. Includes CD-ROM unit, turntable, dual cassette with HyperWow and Mega Flutter, unfolding 84 inch digital color projection multi-screen TV, corkscrew and toothpick, 2,275 buckazoids, back ordered, none currently available. Dodecaphonic Around Sound Processor. Ever notice how flat and unexciting normal stereophonic, quintrophonic, and octophonic recordings are? With the Dodecaphonic Around Sound Processor, your music will seem to come from 12 directions. In front of you, behind you, either side of you, for mid- CD GI-ROM TV. Move over C Pocket Pal Portable Terminal. Say! Pocket Pal Connect- to the pocket pal.
That's not a very clean habit. I'll bet you wish you could. The powerful quad quark drives Rev to life. Time and space bend under the fibrillations of the time rip transfluxers. Your adrenaline and stomach reel with the hyperbolic hyperbole. And finally, finally! It's the... You hear an electronic hum approaching from behind you. You... You hear an electronic hum approaching from behind you. Hear an electronic hum approaching from behind you. Hear an electronic hum approaching from your right.
you see a small keypad. An SQ4 hint book. Looks rather like a security droid of some sort. This is your brain. Had this been a real brain, you would have known how to use it. You've seen this mystic rune somewhere else. Yeah, this looks like toilet material. Probably represents some tertiary function of the supercomputer brain. Certainly nothing important. Keep your hands to yourself.
again. Roger. It's me, your old friend, Sludge Vohal. I've taken the liberty of borrowing your son's body. I had to remove him first to make room for my mental self. His is on this disc. Say, it's most enjoyable to be in a young, healthy body, even if it's from your bloodline. In fact, I like it so much, I think I'll keep it. I guess we'll have no use for this anymore. Now it's time to settle things, once and for all. You'd better be careful, though. Keep this in mind. If I die while in this body, that disc will be useless. Your son will never draw another breath. And if you don't defend yourself, you will never live to buff another helmet. Come on, show me what you've got, mop jockey. you can muster. All this space hero nonsense must be getting to you. You're getting old, Roger. I, on the other hand, am enjoying the physical joys of youth. Follow me. There are many things we need to talk about. Is it true? I'm so... You must be very confused. Were Volhall's words true? Are you really my son? You do look a little like me, though not as good-looking. What do you mean, not as good-looking? I'm ten times... Wait... What am I saying? This is no way to start. Yes, what Vohal said is true. I have many things to tell you, Dad. I should start at the beginning. I was born 19 years ago on Xenon. It's always been my home. The Xenon of today, at least up until recently, had made great strides in managing our planet's resources. That included water, minerals, even the talent of our population. We enjoyed peace for so many years, we took it for granted. The creation of the first super biomech computer was the biggest success story in our history. When the Vohal virus was introduced and began to control the computer, a state of total chaos was created. We were 
Unprepared for what followed as Vohal turned our technology against us, the population was quickly decimated. Some of us stayed and tried to fight, some were captured, and some fled the planet. When it seemed there was no hope, we thought of one last long shot effort. That was to find the only person in history ever to defeat Bohal. We had to go back in time to find that person, you. We got there just in time. You had to go back in time to get me? Why wasn't I available in this time? What happened to me? I don't understand. I'm sorry. There are some things I, I wish I could tell you, but can't. I know that's not what you want to hear. Believe me, I just can't. Hey, if you're my son, who's your mother? My wife? Where is she? Who is she? You sure ask a lot of questions for a janitor. This is my mother and your wife. Her name was Beatrice, Beatrice Wankmeister. She was quite beautiful, wasn't she? What do you mean, was quite beautiful? What are you saying? I'm so sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Please, I can't tell you anymore. I don't believe all this. I'm so confused. It doesn't matter now. I have to send you back where I found you so that history will properly reflect the events which brought us to this place in time. You won't remember much. This will seem like it was a weird, fuzzy dream. I must get back to the task of contacting all the surviving citizens of our planet. We have a huge task ahead of us. Rebuilding our city and our lives will not be easy, but we will do it. Once more, I have to ask you to enter the time rip. It will return you to Magmetheus in the Space Quest IV era. Please, go now. It's time. Dad? I'm glad I got to see you, even if only for a few minutes. Xenon owes you a lot. Goodbye, Dad. unanswered questions. The future should prove most interesting for Roger, if he can stay out of trouble long enough to reach it. We're glad you could help Roger get through it all. Thank you for playing Space Quest 4.